Bogotov once again, Yom Yushalayim Sameach. I want to say Yashir Koch Hachem to all of you for a beautiful morning. Davening was really wonderful. Chagiga was great. Um, and uh, I think a very celebratory day continues now. We have a great schut this morning uh, to host Harav Mordechai Willig here at SAR High School. Rabbi Willig is a Rosh Yeshiva, Rosh Kolel, Yeshiva University. He's the Rav of the Young Israel here in Riverdale. He's the Skan of Beisdin, of the Beisdin of America. He is one of the great poskim of our community. Many of you over the course of this year or in previous years here have learned about the prenuptial agreement. Rabbi Willig wrote the prenuptial agreement that has spread and been used across our community. That kind of leadership and gadlut b'Torah has shaped and informed our community in the most profound way. It is also true that many of your teachers in Urbaim here studied Torah for a long time from Rabbi Willig. I learned in Rabbi Willig's shir in Yeshiva University, in Morasha Kolel, and a lot of people in this room drew lots of Torah from Rabbi Willig. Today, Rabbi Willig comes to share with us a personal experience, having had the remarkable schut of being in Medina Israel at the time of the events that we celebrate today. It is not every day, I'm not sure how many times you've had the experience of hearing from someone who actually had that experience firsthand. And to have that from one of the Gdolei Torah of our community makes it that much more special. It is my honor to introduce Rav Mordechai Willig. In Halel, which we said this morning, the last two prokham have remarkable statements which directly bear upon the events we're describing. The first, Hallelujah Hashem Kol Goyim, what a strange verse. We say that the non-Jews, the Goyim, should praise Hashem because Gavar Aleinu Chasto, because Hashem has been good to us. But why then do we call upon the Goyim, the non-Jews, to praise Hashem? A remarkable interpretation is offered by one of the great rabbis of the Valozhin Yeshiva, of Yitzchak Mi Valozhin, who said that sometimes we, B'nai Yisrael, are unaware of miracles that transpire. We're not aware of all the threats and the plans that are hatched against us. It is only those who have hatched those plans and have seen, seen them be foiled time and again that can praise Hashem with a higher level of praise. When I was a student in Karim Biavda in 1967, after the war was over, the Israelis printed a remarkable document. It was found in the fortress of Latrun, which the Israelis conquered so quickly that the Arabs who retreated had no time to shred the papers, which they normally would do. There was a ghastly plan. It was printed in Arabic and in Hebrew, Mariv Yidiot, shortly after the war. Some of you may know that the pre-67 geography, there was a kibbutz and a yeshiva known as Shalavim. Many of you may have relatives who studied there. Shalavim was surrounded on three sides, on three sides, by Arab territory. A small little corridor attached it on its west to the state of Israel, merely two kilometers across. He discovered a plan to cut off that corridor and to slaughter every man, woman, and child in Shalavim. And lest you think that this was an empty threat, no one would ever kill every man, woman, and child. 
There's only one case that we know about, unfortunately, where a settlement was attacked successfully by Arab forces. It was a settlement of Kfar Etzion on the eve of the original Yom Atzmut. When they were overwhelmed, they, they lifted the white flag of surrender, international law. Instead of accepting the surrender, they p- proceeded to kill every single person there. Two Jews escaped to bear testimony. This is the threat which I faced. I faced with all the other millions of Jews and Israelis in 1967. When Nasser the head of the Arab world proclaimed he's going to drive every Jew into the sea. People were afraid of a second Holocaust. It was only 22 years after the end of World War II. And therefore, Hallelujah was Hashem Kol Goyim. We would never even known about that plot had it not been for the quick retreat of Arab forces from Latrun. And the next psukim, min ha-meitzar karati ka anani bar A meitzar, literally, is a strait. We were in a strait in the, in the state of Israel, surrounded on all sides by armies threatening to invade us and to kill us. The word strait, meitzar, in its most literal sense, is also relevant to this discussion. You see, this gentleman named Nasser, in that month, the month of ER, 1967, closed the Straits of Tehran, Meitzare Tehran, south of Eilat. In international law, that is an act of war, a blockade, which entitled the Israelis to strike back whenever they wanted to. More so, Nasser demanded that the United Nations Emergency Force, which had been stationed 10 years previous after the Sinai campaign, to protect the Sinai-Israeli border by the Negev, be removed immediately. And the United Nations Force complied. Even though their whole purpose was to protect the State of Israel, they just disappeared. So you have massive forces, tens of thousands of troops with tanks threatening to come in and destroy every man, woman, and child and drive them into the sea. You must read the tense history which led up to the war. Three weeks of tremendous tension from Yom Atzmaut, Heiyar, which was a Monday like this year, until Chavaviyar, two days ago on our calendar, when Israel, after many difficult deliberations, decided with no alternative to launch a preemptive strike. With Hashem's help, many miracles, the Egyptians changed the code and didn't tell the Jordanians, and the chief of staff went to sleep and said, don't wake me no matter what. Israeli planes flew low over the Sinai Desert and destroyed the Egyptian Air Force on the ground. The biggest miracle was the first hour of the war. This enabled the Israeli ground forces to successfully go into the Sinai and in a matter of three days they were poised to be all the way to the Suez Canal. But there are more miracles than that. Many more miracles. Minah meitzar karati ka. Eliminating the Egyptian army broke the straits, freed the straits of Tehran, and broke the straits that were threatening to choke us. But that would have been the end of it, save for the most incredible historical fact. King Hussein of Jordan, a very conservative monarch who was able to stay on the throne for many decades because of his conservative approach, did the unthinkable. He put his soldiers under the command of the Egyptians, and when the war broke out, and Nasser said, 
were marching on Tel Aviv, he said in effect, Amar Oyev Erdof Asig Achalek Shalal. Come on in, Hussein. Join the spoils of war. Ignoring Israeli pleas not to start a, a second front, he did. He fired on Jerusalem, which forced Israel to retaliate. And believe it or not, in three days, Israeli forces had reached the Jordan River and conquered Yerushalayim. Hence Yom Yerushalayim today, Wednesday, Chavchet Iyar. You must understand, you can't fully understand, but you must understand nonetheless, that in the mindset of students like myself who were in Israel in 1967, 19 years after the War of Independence, when we failed to liberate the old city of Jerusalem. And our mindset was, we would never see the Western Wall, nor our children, nor our grandchildren. No one would see it until the Mashiach would come. That was our mindset. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the most unpredictable of possible events, Yerushalayim is in our hands. You may have seen HaKotel B'yadeinu, HaRabayet B'yadeinu, and Rabbi Goren is blowing the shofar. Not believable. But it really happened. Hayinu Kecholmim, a book by that name, featuring those paratroopers looking up at those magical stones. Only because Lev Melachim B'yad Hashem, the hearts of kings and monarchs is in God's hands, and for some reason, King Hussein decided to attack the state of Israel. In three days, the war was basically done. On the sixth day of war, it was a six-day war, Israeli forces climbed to the Golan, took the Golan Heights to achieve peace in that part of the world as well. Incredible. Min karatika, not just anani, Hashem didn't just answer us and save us from death, which in and of itself is a reason to celebrate. But by Merchavka, expansively, Israel tripled its size, capturing large swaths of territory, liberating the old city of Jerusalem and the Western Wall. The eight Hashem Haitazot, he niflat be'enenu. Same Perak. This all came from Hashem, miraculous in our eyes. This took place on a Wednesday, Chavchet Iyar, 50 years ago, exactly today. And I was a student, and yes, in Karen Biavna. We were plenty scared. As a matter of fact, on the second day of the war, Tuesday, yesterday, the Air raid siren went off in the middle of Tfilat Shacharit. We rushed to the Miklat. We were very, very afraid. Because Nasser said he's marching on Tel Aviv. You have to pass by Karen Biavna, Kvish Achof. Never saw him, thankfully. It was bluff and bluster, but we didn't know that. When the war was over, everyone wanted to go back to the old city of Yerushalayim but they were filled with mines and barbed wire fences from 19 years. He couldn't get in. The public was informed that exactly one week after the conquest, on the morning of Shavuot, the public will be allowed to come in for the first time in 19 years to the old city and the Kotel HaMaravi. Karen Biavna students, most of the older ones were in the army, but the younger ones and the Americans had a mishmer all night in a place called Heichal Shlomo on, on King George Street. You may, know, may have seen it. And after Shacharit and Kriyat Torah Kivatikin, we went out to the street around five in the morning, expecting to be the first ones there. <laughs> not by a long shot. The New York Times, not so friendly to Israel, reported that a quarter of a million Jews reached the Kotel that morning probably twice that much. 
And Israeli police were there with traffic control barriers. And Rav Hadari led us in song. Tehillim chapter 122. Samachti be'omrim li bet Hashem nelech. Omdot hayu raglenu b'sharayich Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim habnuya ki'ir shechubra layachtav. If there's one parak which encapsulates the events of that week, it's this one. I want to describe to you briefly that incredible event. Our rabbis have taught us in Yerushalmi, Baba Kama 7-7, Ki'ir Shechubra Layachtav, a city that was unified, exactly as what happened on Yom Yerushalayim when the city was unified, that it's a city Shemechaberet Yisrael Zelazeh. It unifies and connects one Jew with another. Yerushalayim is a place of much conflict, requiring a special bracha, we say Friday night, Hapore Sukat Shalom Aleinu, Al Kolamo Yisrael, the Ali Yerushalayim, requires its own bracha. Is now the focus of the conflict between Jews and Arabs, and unfortunately, the focus of conflicts between Jews and Jews as well. But not that day. That day I recall marching to the first time in my life, I never expected it to happen at all in my life, through the Shariafo, down to the Kotel, all Jews marching together. On one side of me was a chassid of Rab Aralach with a yellow kaftan and white socks and a Yushalmi strimal. There were yeshiva students, some with black hats, some with knitted yarmulkes. And yes, there were bareheaded Israelis with cameras on their shoulders to record this incredible event on the Chag of Shavuot. Putting aside all our differences, we all march together. The theme of the 50th anniversary, Yerushalayim ha-me'uchedet v'ha-me'achedet. Yerushalayim, the unified, which unifies. This is exactly what we saw precisely 50 years ago on Yom Yerushalayim. And more pointedly, from my own personal first-hand experience on Shavuot. We came down to the Kotel HaMaravi, a place we thought we would never see in our lives. And there it is. And we come to Davin the Musaf of Shalosh Trigalim, which you will be saying exactly a week from this morning. And there we recite, V'havi'enu l'tzion ircha berina. Bring us to Tzion, your city, with joy. We thought it would never be fulfilled in our lifetimes. Yes, we were in West Jerusalem, a more modern city, but the real Tzion, the old city, we thought we would never get there. And yet, right, it happened right then and there, on Shavuot, on Shalosh Regalim. It was an incredible experience. The emotion, the exaltation, the euphoria, We didn't want to leave. The police said, out, out. Why? There are more people coming. So we go back. You can't go back the way you came. You're against traffic. How do you go back? Only one way back. Through the shuk. I'm giving a psak here right now in front of you. You are not allowed to walk through the shuk. It's too dangerous today. Not that day. That day, we walked through. The Arabs were cowering. Ki nafal pachar hayhudim alehem, as we read in the Megillah. And therefore, we are duty bound, in my opinion, to express our thanks to Hashem for the incredible events, primarily from a halachic perspective. He saved us mi mavet lechayim, 
as we are taught in Megillah Daf Yudalit. We certainly should be required to say the Hallel. Three reasons are given for not saying Hallel on Purim. It happened in the diaspora. It was still dependent on Achashverosh. And there was a Megillah instead. None of the three applies to our events. In Eretz Israel, we're independent. Hallel should be said. There's a great dispute among the authorities, since my time is about up, I can't even begin to discuss it, whether Hallel should be said with a bracha or without a bracha, not for now. But one thing must be said. We are required to thank Hashem for saving us from a terrible threat of death. Lest you think that this is a purely Zionistic perspective, I brought a sefer with me. It's called Hilchot Yom Atzma'ut V'Yom Yerushalayim. I have only time to read two lines. The two lines are written by Rav Suraya Dablitsky, a wonderful Mekubal and Sadiq from B'nai Barak, not a part of the Zionist camp whatsoever. And he writes as follows. I'll read to you in the Hebrew, and here everyone knows Hebrew. He complains that nothing has been heard from the Rabbanim of various chugim except for the chief rabbinate. Sheka'amuru kulam b'li yotzeim and aklal hayu b'oto hanes. Kulam hayu miyuadim chas v'shalom l'hashmada totalit b'achzariyut kidukmat kivshanei Auschwitz umedanik. I need not say more. This terrible threat we were saved mi mavat lechayim min hameitzar karatika anani ba merchavka would require a halal or some other celebration, irrespective of the liberation of the old city. How much more so with that incredible event, which we believe is one step in Yerushalayim habenuya kir shechur balayachtav. It's not totally benuya, of course. We still have the. Harabayit is off limits. We have no Beit HaMikdash. But yes, to some extent it is Benuya. There's a great dispute between my Rebbe Rav Soloveitchik on one hand and Rav Moshe Feinstein on the other hand. If someone sees the old city today, not the Kotel, just the old city, is there an obligation to rend one's garments? According to my Rebbe, Yerushalayim is considered to be Bechur Bana, because Yerushalayim is an extension of the Beit HaMikdash. According to Rav Feinstein, Yerushalayim today, since it's under Jewish control, is Bibinyana, to some extent. Yerushalayim Habunuya is not merely a future prediction, but according to Rav Feinstein, a partial reality, exempting us from an obligation to rend our garments. And therefore, I conclude, you are fortunate to live at a time that Eretz Yisrael and Yerushalayim in particular, for the first time in millennia, are under the control of the armed forces of Medinat Yisrael. You are fortunate to live at a time when the land is being rebuilt and even Yerushalayim, to some extent, is being rebuilt. You are fortunate to recognize these realities and to thank Hashem for the miracle He performed in the spirit of Me'et Hashem Haitazot Hineflat Be'inenu. And therefore, I conclude as most appropriate today Zehayom Asa Hashem Nagila Venismacha Bo. Thank you.